for um, for somebody here at the VA and what an awesome result sheet it is at first glance. Um, one of the, the things that stands out in my mind is that we see that this person's weight is 200.7 uh, pounds. And, you know, that's often the first thing that we look at when we step on the scale. Um, and it's the least interesting information and it's the least useful information on this result sheet. Um, so if we continue on looking at that body composition analysis first part of the sheet there, we can see that of their 200 pounds, 106.7 is lean body mass. So more than half of their weight is lean mass. And that's important to know. And of that lean mass, mostly it's simply body water. And a lot of times people lose weight quickly or gain weight quickly. And being able to use this result sheet um, to see that their body water is 78 pounds, a person could see, am I just losing body water? Am I just gaining body water? So it's useful to look at the, your weight, sure, but to know that, a, that more than half of it is lean mass and more than half of that is body water. And then up here at the top sheet, we can see that 94 pounds of their body composition is fat mass. And that's probably uh, what this person is most interested in as well. If we zip on over to that, uh, over, um, yeah, you were right there where it looks at the body fat. Um, nope, let's come back down to that one later. Let's look at the muscle, the fat analysis there. So you just scroll down and there's that. Um, yep, we're looking at that particular section now. So there's that weight, 200.7 pounds. Yep, we saw that up above. Okay, all right. And then the next one down here is the skeletal muscle mass. And there's 60 pounds of skeletal muscle mass. That's the mass that we're building when we go to the gym and we're pumping iron and when we're walking and gaining muscle in our legs. So it's really valuable to track and watch this um, skeletal muscle mass. And then uh, underneath, we saw that fat mass, 94 pounds, sure enough, because we had seen that up above. So these three numbers stacked up against each other are, are a snapshot of the muscle to fat um, kind of ratio up against each other. And you, I saw that you highlighted that area around that, that dash. Mm -hmm. And that dash there, it's kind of gray in color as opposed to being black. That gray in color represents kind of like the, the normal range, the 100th percentile, not to be confused with 100 pounds, but that 100th percentile and down to the 85th percentile or up to the 115th percentile. So this is the normal range for healthy females of this height. So it doesn't matter how old somebody is, but it doesn't matter their gender and it does matter their height. So for, for most women of five feet one, um, this weight of 200.7 pounds is outside of that normal um, range. Um, and this also, this uh, muscle mass of 60 pounds is also outside of this normal range. Well, that's a sweet number right there because you can see this person has incredible muscle mass. I mean, they're at the 126th percentile for women of their height. And that muscle mass is going to be an asset. And that's going to help this woman um, as she goes about her fat loss um, work that she has. And then again, there's that fat mass um, kind of scaled out or charted out as well. And if you look at these three numbers stacked up against each other, you see that they kind of make a shape of like a C. Um, and what this person would like to do is bring down her fat mass, bring down her overall weight. And she'd like these three numbers to be more stacked up and down against each other. Yeah. Um, Let's see. Um, yeah, so just kind of bringing them down. So the three, no, yep, you got it, just like that, yeah. So the, the three numbers are just kind of stacked up. So they make more of like an I shape there. Um, and that's pretty, um, that's just, that's kind of a, a good goal for this particular person to have. So Mina, we're gonna zip on up, uh, up to, we're gonna go up and to the right here and we're gonna look at that, nope, up, nope. up. Okay. Let's look at that body fat to lean mass body control. 
So based on this person's uh, body composition and muscle to fat analysis, InBody here is recommending that this person focus her efforts on losing fat mass. And there's her long term goal. And that's not going to be a goal for this month. It's not a goal for this employee wellness challenge. It's not even a goal for this year. This is a long term goal. This person is going to be working towards a goal of losing 60 pot, 62 pounds of fat mass. And there's no recommendation to gain lean mass. We saw earlier this person has a beautiful, incredible amount of skeletal muscle mass. So there's no recommendation to gain muscle mass. Um, however, that 60 pounds of muscle mass is going to help her continue to lose fat mass. So that's just um, something really sweet to watch. Whenever I uh, retake my body or my in-body body composition and I get a new results sheet, I go right up to that upper right-hand corner and I just see, okay, so I went from 62 pounds that I need to lose. Am I now at 60 pounds? Am I now at um, 58 pounds to lose, 56 pounds to lose? And that's a fun kind of a meter to watch over time. It's pretty cool to see that. So. Um, Mina, let's uh, scroll down and let's look at that obesity analysis. We're all so familiar with our BMI and nobody likes that because BMI doesn't differentiate how much of our body mass is made up of muscle and how much is made up of fat. Um, what's much more valuable for us is our percentage of body fat. And yep, and there it is right there. And percentage of body fat, just, you know, it's a, it's a factor. How much of our weight what percent of our weight is made up of body fat? And so for women, um, um, we'd love for our body fat percentage to be somewhere between 18% and 28%. And so as this person continues to take her steps towards weight loss, towards fat loss, she's going to find her body weight coming down. She's going to see that her body fat mass is coming down, and that will be reflected in her percentage of body fat. So it's just pretty fun to watch that number come down. It'll go from 46.8, pretty soon she'll see it at 46%, 45%, 44%, and that's pretty exciting. If we um, scroll down even further, we see um, the segment lean analysis. Well, that's just one of the bells and whistles of InBody. It's not exactly um, informative. It's just interesting to see. Um, so we can see, like, for example, the distribution of lean mass throughout this person's body. In her right arm alone, she's got six 0.42 pounds of lean mass in her right arm alone. And that's, again, that's outside of the healthy range, which is, of course, a sweet thing. It's at 124.4%. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, but this person can see that she's got just a smidgen more lean mass in her right arm than she has in her le uh, left arm. And then she, I'm guessing she's just right arm dominant. So no big surprise there. Um, this person has 51.7 lean uh, pounds of lean mass in her trunk alone. And the trunk, as we know, is everything from, you know, um, uh, uh, from her neck down to her, uh, her through her torso. So it's just interesting to see that. Um, and I can see this person has a little bit more lean mass in her left leg than she has in her right leg. Um, perhaps she just somehow um, kind of favors her right leg. Again, not really that valuable, just kind of interesting to see. So we're going to come down. Oh, by the way, just as we saw that her uh, her lean mass is segmented, over here on the upper right, we can see the distribution of her fat mass. So if you scroll up here on the um, screen, if you scroll up, Mina, um, oh. yeah, scroll up. Yeah, uh, so we can see how her fat mass is distributed throughout her body as well. So, yep, same thing. So just like most people, this woman is pretty normal. Most of her fat is hanging out in her arms and the trunk, um, just like most of us. And so it's another thing. She'll just be able to see how she's, see where she's losing her fat mass as she continues to take those steps. So let's scroll back down again and look at that, um, the water, Mina. So scroll back down on the sheet and we'll see, this is a ratio of her extracellular water to oh, her yeah, total okay. body water. And right there, we can see, first of all, she's right there in the sweet spot. Everything is as she would love for it to be. Um, so um, this is just a ratio. And it's, um, and uh, I guess, 
what this informs her is that she doesn't have a whole lot of water hanging out outside of her cells. So she's not retaining water. She doesn't have inflammation or an injury. If that were the case, her ratio would be way outside of that healthy range. If she were dehydrated, um, she would see her number be a little bit uh, too low, lower than 0.36. Um, and so this is just a nice um, confirmation that this person is well hydrated and she's not retaining a whole lot of water. Now, if we go down to this body composition history, ah, so right away we can see that this particular person, she's done the in-body three times because she has three points here of interest. And what, um, what we can see from this is that over time, ever since she took her first in-body, January 17th of 2024, she's gained weight. Um, and Really quickly, um, hold on. On this one, on that first, on January 17th, um, that was the first time um, she did it, but we did it, we entered their information wrong. Yes. So this first column, we do not count, but this uh, second one right next to it, like two minutes later is what we're looking at. So this right here. Spot on. Absolutely. Yeah. Ah, and isn't that awesome? So what we can see from this is that this particular woman gained weight since January 17th, but she gained, uh, she gained a smidgen of muscle mass, but she also must have gained a little bit of fat mass too, because her bot, her percentage of body fat came up. And so, um, and her water, her water ratio ah, came down just a little bit. Um, not really um, that much. So yeah, this is just valuable for this person to see. The more times that she does the in-body, the more points that she'll have, data points along the way to see, is she maintaining or losing weight? Is she maintaining or gaining muscle mass so that her percentage of body fat is coming down? So this woman will set a goal to maintain that 60 pounds of muscle mass, bring down her weight, and then she'll see her percentage of body fat continue to fall. Do Those you agree numbers, when we say about the muscle mass, like when people start losing weight, that muscle mass will go down as well? Uh, yeah. Because we can't tell our brain what to burn, like to burn fat instead of the muscle. It burns both. What the hopes is when you start losing weight, that you're going to start exercising more so you can build that muscle back up. Is that safe to say? Yeah, that's a really great point to make. And thanks for making that point. It's so expected and so normal that as we lose weight, we're going to lose a little bit of muscle mass. Absolutely. Yeah. So those are just really valuable numbers to track our progress as we go through this employee wellness challenge or as we go through any sort of a, of a, of, of a weight loss uh, process. Those are the data points that are really fun to watch. Now we can scroll up here um, again, and there's a there's two more numbers on this data sheet that are valuable, I think. Um, first of all, our, that other one is the visceral fat level. And this person has a, fat, a visceral fat level of 20. Now, most of us are familiar with subcutaneous fat, and that's the fat that we squeeze when we squeeze our arms or we squeeze our belly, and we can feel that fat. Visceral fat we'll never be able to see. We'll never be able to squeeze that. So the in-body provides us with that information and it's so valuable because visceral fat, it's a marker for health disease or risk for health disease. And in-body recommends that our visceral fat level be at a 10 or lower. So this person has a, um, she, she's got a journey. She's got a health journey and it's gonna be reflected in, in her visceral fat level as well. So um, as she loses weight, the next time that she does the in-body, she might see her level be at a 19. And then she might see her level be at an 18. And that is not only um, losing weight to improve the way she looks or feels, but it's gonna be reflected in her visceral fat level as well. And that is a definite confirmation her health is improving. Her health risk for disease is being reduced. So visceral fat level is really important from a health marker standpoint. And then finally, the, um, the last piece of information that's valuable on this result sheet is basal metabolic rate. And this is especially important for people who count calories or who have worked with a dietitian who has recommended a daily calorie count. So this person 
this person wants to consume over or just about 1400 calories every day just to keep her body functioning. So without ever even getting out of bed in the morning, her, her lungs are still functioning. Her kidneys are still doing what they need to do. Her respiratory system or her heart is still beating. So she needs about 1,400 calories every day just to keep her body functioning. And so her weight loss um, sort of formula is going to be some sort of a balance that she's worked out perhaps with her dietitian or perhaps with her healthcare provider that's, that's balancing uh, her calories such that she's feeding her body what it needs to function. And she's also achieving a calorie deficit every day so that she's able to burn fat and be able to lose weight. So I can't give any recommendations about how many calories this person should eat, but it's valuable to know how many calories her body wants for metabolism purposes just to function. And then she can take that one step further and seek out advice for, um, for, you know, for diet and nutrition. So this is a pretty awesome um, result sheet and it's pretty telling and it's just so much more valuable than simply how much do I weigh and how much, um, how much weight am I gaining and how much weight am I losing? That's what I pull out of this in-body results sheet. Is there anything that you would add to it, Mina? I usually, when I talk to patients on, on this metabolic, um, the calorie intake, I also like to say, just so you guys are aware, when you start working out and losing weight, your muscle is going to need more energy. So that number will change based on what you're doing and how much activity you're putting into your daily um, routine. So what happens is if you start working out and if let's say you work out an hour a day and you're not eating enough calories, your body's not going to burn any fat because it's storing that for energy. So if you're not giving it enough, it's not going to burn anything. So I always tell them it's really important if you start working out and moving a lot. It's not just running. It's like if you're walking more, if you're walking faster, if you're doing things that you're not weren't able to do like a weeks before, that is when you need to increase your protein intake because your muscles need protein in order to uh, to function and start losing weight. So that's one thing I like to point out on here. This number changes depending on what you do with your activity. I also like to put up here that our body, um, the water, we are main, mainly made of water. So 75% of water, your weight should be water. So if you look um, saying, hey, is that 78 pounds? Is that 75% of my, of my weight? And if it's not, that's kind of how you know if you're dehydrated or not dehydrated. Um, I also like to point out when people work out a lot, they tend to drink more water and they're urinating more. So they're actually, even though they're having more water, they get more dehydrated because they're urinating so much. So it's really important that we start taking stuff like, you know, putting some electrolytes in like Pedialyte and stuff, mixing in with your water. So you're retaining more of those electrolytes that you need. So you do not actually get dehydrated. Um, and then I think that's all I have. Um, that body fat mass, like the, the 62 pounds, like you said up there, that's how much they're, much they're recommending that they lose. I also want people to know that this is just a tool. It's not like a for sure thing. And a lot of things can affect what your, your results are. You know, if you eat before your test, if you exercise before your test, if what you're wearing, what time of the day it is. And so just be aware that this is not all like, 100% is just a tool for us to kind of visualize what's happening in there. But thanks for bringing, think, oh. bringing that up. And I guess I would just add to that then that it would be important for the person um, to the second time that the, the, the that they do the in-body or the third time or the fourth time to take it um, at the same time of the day under the same conditions. Um, yeah. yeah. And then the first time they take there, if you know you're taking a, doing an in-body assessment, um, it's good um, to not, you know, eat before you go to your assessment. I think you mentioned that yesterday when we talked. Um, and also when you do your first assessment uh, on the back of that embody assessment will be recommendations and things what changes the results. So look on the back of this as well. Um, but how just often, know that's a tool. How often do you recommend people do the embody if they're on an active weight loss so for the MOVE program, because it's 16 weeks long, um, I recommend that they do every six weeks because it gives them a little more time to work on things. 
Um, and then I don't, I mean, depends. So for me, six weeks, so it gives them more um, of a time to get their stuff figured out and then they can see bigger results. So they're more encouraged. I feel like doing it every week or every day is more like, you know, it's more discouraging, I guess, for people because not much change you can see in a, in a week. I feel like that six weeks is a really good base. Like you're giving yourself time, you're making changes, you're making lifestyle changes, you're doing physical activity more. And it gives a really good like, okay, six weeks, that's a good what I'm doing. If I'm doing things wrong or if I'm doing them right. Awesome. How cool. Yeah. What a great so, tool. Yeah. I love it. Um, if you guys have any questions when you guys are looking over this, don't, don't hesitate to reach out. Again, it's just a tool. It's a good kind of a snapshot of what's happening in our bodies that we can usually don't think about. But yeah, thank you. Good luck.